Here is what uh, Tim Ryan in that last clip was responding to. Tim Ryan's talking about the enormous number of people unemployed 36 tri- uh, million by, by now it's a little bit more we're headed towards depending on who you believe somewhere between 25 and 30 percent unemployment we have huge bread lines in the country people lining up with cars children going hungry and it's just going to get worse the republicans have said we're not doing anything Here's Kevin McCarthy's response to the HEROES Act. And let's be clear. He's going to respond this way if it's a $1 trillion bill, a $500 million bill, a $1.5 trillion bill, a $2 trillion bill. The number doesn't make a darn difference. Here's Kevin McCarthy uh, saying this. It's really sickening that the Democrats are using this opportunity to enforce their socialism. Remember, what did this bill that they just passed on Friday? Well, it's about pot. It's about prisoners. It's about politicizing election law, prioritizing illegal immigrants and pensions. These are all things that are socialist wish list that they've been trying to pass long before COVID ever came to this land. Um, I, I love the fact that they're so concerned about uh, a mail by vote or vote by mail. First of all, there's no data that says that it uh, supports Democrats, but just the idea that there would be that much democracy is terrifying to them. They're going to call you a socialist and say it's a socialist wish list, no matter what you send. What what the Democrat Democrats could have just spent could have just said we're we're just uh, going to completely deregulate everything, and they would call it socialist uh, wish list. Yeah, this proves that. Uh, of course. And it's like, you know, like, like, who is it that Nancy Pelosi is afraid of is going to say 3.6 trillion? Come on, this thing should have been 3 trillion. I mean, give me a break. It's just ridiculous. Kevin McCarthy is just, I mean, they are doing nothing. And this is the, this is the problem with the entire, this is the problem with the, the White House administration response to the epidemic itself, to the pandemic. And this is the, the problem with the Republicans' response to the economy. Right now, yeah. the economy is in a state of shock. Right now, we have the curve, at least in the biggest, in the epicenter of the country, not in other places, trending down. These two months where everybody was staying at home, these two months where you had temporary fixes from the government in terms of the economy are when you should be actually diligently working to deal with the future and they have done none of this none of it zero and we're back to where we were two months ago with now ninety thousand americans dead 30 some odd million people out of work and nothing nothing no planning for the future none of it there's been nothing there's no silver lining here it's it, it, it's stunning what's up with that because you know obviously these uh people like pelosi are beholden to moneyed interests but it fails at even like the most basic center-left policies that should not be controversial among democrats i mean the democrats are obviously have no ability to do anything they can only message they i mean they you, it, we would be in better shape if the Republican Senate uh, passed this this bill and Trump signed it without a doubt. But it's a messaging bill. So their failure is just strictly political. The White House has failed in terms of actually doing things. They have the power to do all these things. This new piece in the Financial Times where it talks about Jared Kushner advising Trump, don't do testing. Because if you test, you'll find out that there are cases here. And if there are cases, it's going to scare the stock market. And undoubtedly, you know, when you read stuff like the FDA shutting down this uh, Bill Gates initiative to create tests. Look, I want Bill Gates to do, I to just give the government the money, the government should do it. But the government's not doing it. 
and they're stopping other people from doing it. And why are they doing that? I'm convinced it's the same thing. They're not worried about the stock market. They want the economy to come back. So they don't want us to know about tests. I mean, Donald Trump has been saying this every day. Yeah, he's already been saying this explicitly. He's been saying this explicitly. Tests are no good. All it shows is that you have it. If you don't do the test, it, you don't have the cases. And so like they the little are, kid who thinks that uh, if he can't see you, then you can't see him. Well, no, but he's right. No, it's, it's worse than that. Because he knows that if there are reports of less, less cases, people are going to go out. And he thinks, and they have thought this from day one, we will get over it. 100,000, 200,000, even 300,000, 400,000 people, they're sitting in the White House saying, our society can absorb these losses. They are people who are ill. They are people who are older. For the most part, they'll die. There'll be, you know, I don't know, two or three people per person who dies is going to be upset, maybe five. So that's four million people, five million people who are upset because these people have died. We don't need them anyways. Yeah, th their entire ideology is based on getting people insulated from this sort of thing. That's exactly right. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. right. And so the, their enemy is not the, the, the virus. Their enemy is not the, the deaths that the virus could bring. Their enemy is the fear that would be associated and the concern about people dying that would prevent people from going out and, and um, engaging in economic activity. And so they think they could convince people to go out and to gamble to do that. And maybe they're right. And we'll see what happens if the numbers catch up, may not catch up for a month, may not be, maybe six months. We don't know, but this is their, this is their thinking. They specifically, the reason why there weren't tests is because they specifically did not want them. They specifically did not want the test to exist because they, they don't care how many people have it. They care about how many people, people think has it. It's, you know, this is the type of thing where, you know, the, the school psychologist comes back and says, hey, yeah, no, we got to take this kid out of school. He's a danger to everybody. That's what, that's what would happen. They sit down with these people. 